Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about the biggest value. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what gives the biggest value to my customers when I pick a tech stack? What if all my customers are stuck on old technology? Do I risk being left behind? Well, uh, there's a two-part question to this, I would say, but the, the quick answer is that yes, you always risk remaining behind in terms of IT development if, if you're solely working with customers who are behind the technological uh, curve. An example would be if you are working in the uh, banking industry or, well, it doesn't have to be banking, but, uh, I mean, some of uh, the older organizations are still running COBOL or Fortran and languages like that that are practically dead outside of that click, uh, the, like that very niche area. And similar sorts of things you will see in the telecommunication business where, I mean, I'm not saying that Erlang is necessarily dead, but it is definitely on the lower end of adoption. We, but, uh, at the same time, there are a few quite a few actually really modern languages that are in the same sort of sphere. Uh, so sure, y if you're going to play the investor game of IT, then sh you're going to have to start moving your assets around a little bit, and the assets is your time. You're going to have to figure out what's going to be good investments for you, but at the same time you can't be, you can't be in everything. This is the thing that kind of, like, it... <laughs> I get a little bit tired, I'm not going to say annoyed, because that's not really the thing, but I kind of frown a bit on the people who ask, well, it's the same root question. Frederick, what is the language of the future? Frederick, how can I stay relevant? What tools should I pick? Can you tell me how I, how I can pr ensure that I will know all the right things? And I kind of go, no, I can't tell you what you need to learn in order to stay relevant under all circumstances. That's like it's, I mean, I would have to know exactly in what region you are working. I would have to know exactly what your desires are, your long-term goals, what type of customers you have. I would have to know practically everything about you and the region of, uh, of work that you have in order to answer those questions. And it's simply not sustainable for you to keep up with every single tool it's not gonna work. That's why I'm trying to teach you the mindset. I'm trying to teach you how to understand how IT moves and what to look for in new developments. Because if you can figure out how to spot a good idea, something that will make the difference and something that's not gonna make the difference, you don't have to ask me. You will be able to figure this out yourself. I try to teach the exact same thing in front-end development because that is literally the best way for you to become the most valuable front-end developer that you can possibly be. If you can spot a good library or a good dependency among the hundreds if not thousands of bullshit ones that are not really going to help you and might not even be all that valuable to you, you will be, uh, um, immediately you will be more valuable and you will save more time than the vast majority of front-end developers who are drowning in all the things they sort of have to know in order to be able to say that, yeah, I know everything. And it's not gonna be sustainable for you, so just leave this. The, the thing that you have to understand is that y each developer has a choice to make. And that choice is how much job security am I looking for because you will not be able to learn all the tools at least at the profession like at the master level because simply put there is no single company that is using all of them it's not gonna work it's not gonna happen so if you're working in this scenario with customers who have say older technology I don't even know what old tech means in this scenario I mean it can be everything from that oh we're using bootstrap and jQuery uh, to that, oh no, we're not using the latest version of Angular. Like, I don't know. It could be that you're working in, as I was saying, COBOL. So, 
without more context, I can't really say where you are. What you have to figure out is where you roughly ha are in terms of understanding the, tr the most relevant new tools. That doesn't mean that you're bleeding edge. It doesn't mean that you know absolutely everything and you know the you're a master or you're working in companies uh, or with tools that is as bleeding edge as it gets that's not what it's about it's about figuring out what the sweet spot is if you want to be a trendsetter or be at the very peak of things actually i will even go as far to say that that's a little bit of an anti-pattern for most for most of you it's going to not it's not actually going to help you your career all that much it's really only if you're really really interested in the thing uh, it might give you a slight edge here and there but it takes you should know that it takes a lot of fucking energy to be on the forefront all the time in every single possible area because there's so many areas you can, guys just fucking let it go you're not going to be a master of everything you're not going to you have to make some bets i'm sorry you can't have everything and the sooner you get to that uh, realization the better so this person what i said to this person was very simple each developer has to make a way of okay do i want stable uh, employment which is usually that you stay at some company who feels like where you feel fairly secure versus all right uh, am i going to go to another company or am i going to invest in new tools so maybe i can do it in my spare time like where is your balance find your own sweet spot find that balance and you have to decide for yourself where that balance is my my tip to you is to figure out what are the common things if you look at the vast majority of people and you just talk to a few developers have a look around what are they using don't listen to the fucking tech talkers not all of them are going to be tell they're going to be the range is different is uh, different from company to company but each tech talker i mean usually the, the way it goes guys is that the tech talkers are usually talking about the trendiest and bestest things sometimes they're really good and they actually say something that is relevant to the vast majority of people but the people that you should really listen to are people in your region like what are people fucking using go to the job postings if you don't know what tools are relevant an example would be let's say that you've never played around with docker well docker is a very common tool might be useful to take a look at it you don't have to be a master of the thing to still be relevant you just know what it's about subscribe to some newsletters take a few tutorials and figure the thing out that's going to be enough for you to know what the thing is about and then you can take it from there if it becomes relevant for job purposes now the second part of this question was what is the biggest value to your customer and i will tell you that unless your customer has some very specific metrics or kpis that they want to deliver on or slas or whatever if they don't have any numbers for you you should just go with the thing that you feel the most comfortable with the thing that is going to be the simplest and most stable thing that you can invest in and if you have a personal preference you can just go with that it doesn't really matter all that much the best thing for you is if you build something that is the standard boring thing that is going to be very easy to scale or it's going to be very easy to find people to long term support it. It's going to be very easy for you to do qu things in it quickly because you can be productive. If you ask me personally what I believe that that's going to be for smaller projects or for like every standard project, unless it's something very specific, it's going to be Node with TypeScript and some type of SBA. It can be React, it can be Angular, it doesn't really matter. TypeScript is uh, with Node, if you ask me, should be the default. It will have everything that you need. It's by default the most, uh, it's really performant by default. The product, personal productivity that you're going to have with it is going to be higher than the like most other languages in many cases, but you still have a type system which makes it much more scalable. Uh, the performance is in 99% of the time enough for whatever you might want to do. There's going to be more libraries than you can possibly use. So you have, you know that you're not going to find something unforeseen that you can't do. And if you ever have to hand it over to somebody else, they will be able to work with it because there's so much learning resource, like so many learning resources. Uh, practically every single uh, developer in the world needs to know JavaScript. So adopting TypeScript is not a big issue. So it, like all things considered, is considered, I would say that this is 
the safest bet if I without me having anything else to go on the one exception I make to this is if you're doing a lot of stuff with say money calculations or high precision mathematics or things like that then it might not be the best choice that might change in the future but uh, it's something to consider but for the average CRUD application it is definitely one of the best choices for your customer but remember I'm saying this without actually talking to your customer. You need to be, uh, you ne ideally you should know your customer well enough to understand what their needs are. And never tr like, just try to uh, understand what they need so that you are accounting for specific requirements and never take risks with, the cu with your customer. You should always try to prioritize giving them the best uh, and most stable solution that they're looking for. So. What I want you to take away from this is that you will not be able to master all the tools, and you can you can, you just you just have to get comfortable with that fact. You will not, and if you feel that you're falling behind, let's say that you're working in an organization where all the practices are outdated. Now, if that is the case, then you're going to have to make the tough choice. Is it in, is this cozy job that you have worth it or do you want to do work with more modern tools now you have options you always have options if you want to go and I mean at the same time you don't have to stay up to date but you always run that risk of getting fired and then not knowing the modern tools and then you have to learn them anyway so it's always a gamble it's always going to be a gamble nobody knows the future so you have to figure out where you do you want to be my suggestion to you is to find a job where you are relevant enough where the uh, the tooling that you're using it doesn't have to be everything it doesn't have to be the most modern thing that there is it just has to be in the middle range of what most companies are using and figuring that out is as easy as talking to the companies in your region what sort of tech are they are they using you don't have to be on the tech talks and know about the latest and trendiest things just the average stuff being average is just fine and f as for f what was going it's going to be bring the most value to your customer you have to talk to your customer what is it that they are looking for and then use your experience to figure out do I need to account for special things such as performance or compliance or legal aspects or whatever it might be if that's not the case the default thing should just be whatever you feel most comfortable with if you're a Ruby guy or a girl be a Ruby person. If you're a P Python person, be a Python person. If you're a Java person, be a Java person. If you have no nothing and you're like basically starting out, go with Node, with TypeScript, uh, because practically it, it will almost always be a very good fit for a standard CRUD, app CRUD application or any type of web application. It is very stable, there's tons of support for it, and practically anybody you hand it over to will understand how to use it. So it's a very overall safe bet. But once again, you have to account for your specific situation. Have a great day.